Assalamu alaikum. So let's begin. Brother Shams and his wife have taken this initiative and I am very thankful to them for, you know, having to arrange everything and inviting me to speak today. So today's workshop is an awareness program. When you talk about birth or delivery, there are so many things and so much of information that I can talk on for days and years and months and still it would be less. So what I had to do was uh, understand about who is here and, you know, basically try to prepare a package in my mind and present to you with the information which would help you at this stage. This is the reason why I asked, who are you, what is your occupation, and what do you expect to gain from today's workshop? So this is an introductory workshop. About me, I am Zahra, all right? By education, I am an information technology engineer. Surprise, surprisingly for you, right? And I have been born and brought up in Saudi Arabia, but by my passport, I'm Indian. So basically, I am a third culture Individual, TCI, which means, you know, I have a multicultural background and I may or may not understand the culture of India or Hyderabad properly, but I would be try to be a bit culturally sensitive and give you what I can in the best way possible. But after my marriage, I had first cesarean, which was very traumatic in India. And then for my second baby, I went to have a VBAC, which was a very wonderful experience. VBAC stands for Vaginal Birth After Caesarean, which also means Normal Birth After Caesarean. And then I decided, why cannot I take it as a career, when it is a very full-fledged career in the West? Now, for those of you who have had one or two babies, you must already be aware that there is this sweeping movement of, you know, the birthing culture across the world, where they are promoting midwives, or doulas, or normal birth. And it's been a bit, you know, more prominent since last two, three years. Especially after uh, Dr. Evita Fernandez has started professional midwifery training in Fernandez, and it's coming in the media. So I hope you all are aware. Right? Are you? Are you all aware? No. Yes or no? No, you're not aware. Okay. All right. So the thing is, there are so many cesareans around the world. According to WHO, they want that the rate should be between 15 to 20%. Okay? To prevent maternal deaths. But the rate at which the public and private organizations around the world, they are doing cesareans, is pretty high. It's 60 to 67 or 50 or 40 around the world. So there is a demand for natural birth and there is a movement because the more the, if the cesarean rates rise, World Health Organization says that the maternal and neonatal deaths will rise. Okay? So we need to control. Why do we need to control? For the benefit of the mothers and the babies and the structure, family structure and the society. So, this is happening, and it's happening in the West. And from last two, three years, there are waves which are sweeping and going through across the Gulf from where I belong, or not I belong, where I work, or where I have been, you know, all my life. I'm currently still working in Saudi Arabia. And in India. In India, it's been five to six years since uh, Dr. Evita Fernandez of the Fernandez Foundation took up took this up as a cause and decided to change her ways and view birth through a new perspective. So today, all of you will be learning delivery or birth through a new perspective. Now, I won't be using the word delivery because there's a famous quote by a midwife. She says that only pizzas are delivered, not babies. The word delivery is a very subjective word. I would use birth because it's your birth a family's birth, a mother's birth, okay? So whenever I talk about birth, I'm talking about the process of delivery or the process of birthing the baby, right? Now, to my credentials, I am a certified childbirth educator. I'm a birth doula, 
I'm certified from an organization called Amani Birth. I'm sure all of this is new for you, but bit by bit we will discover what, what is this, what is a childbirth educator, what is a doula, what is a Amani Birth. Okay, I'm here to help you learn all of these things, go back and then decide how to go on with your further Ne for the babies, okay? And I'm also, by the way, I'm a Mani girls facilitator or a teen girls coach. So I also coach young girls who are around 9 to 15 years. Uh, I hold two workshops. One is coach to 5K marathon uh, to stay healthy, active, and, you know, have a healthy lifestyle. And the other one is for having to learn about Islamic rulings and how to be like a Muslim girl, confident, and, you know, within the Islamic boundaries. And I'm also a natural birthing method certified way back coach, which means I coach the mothers who already had a cesarean who are trying for a normal birth. So basically, I help the couple sit down and we, we have debriefing sessions and I help them understand what went wrong or if the thing that happened was really wrong or not. Okay? What were the loopholes? And when was a cesarean savior for you? This way, it helps you to heal through whatever you have been and have a positive outlook. Okay? So, now currently, adrenaline rush. All right. So, what happens when uh, you have, uh, when you have the flow of adrenaline as your body goes into fight and flight mode? Now, during birth, there are two parts of the brain that we'll be talking about when we talk about labor and birth. First is the neocortex, which is a thinking part. It is at the front of the brain. And the primitive part is at the back. The instincts, or what we call the reflexes, it happens here. Now, during birth, women... Okay, women or animals, when we talk about the mammals, humans or animals, they bring the, fe the, fe the feminine, you know, version of the mammals when we talk about. When they are in labor or birth, their brain shifts from the neocortex mode to the primitive mode during a contraction because the body is doing the job to exit the baby out. How many of you have pets here? We have cats, cats, most of you, no one has a cat here. I have two cats. One is Mopasa, male, and another one is Cassie. So I have two cats, and they're very pretty good pet animals. They're in Saudi Arabia, I miss them a lot. So when you look at animals or mammals, uh, if you take example of a cat, she will first find herself a very calm and cozy place, which is called as nesting, just before her labor begins. She will choose around the places in the house which are dark. All right. Which are dark and uh, which are calm and away from distractions. Okay. So the cats will choose those niches. And when they go into labor, their hormones kick in. The ones that are required for the birth. Now, first baby, first kitty is born, second is born, and then you go in between and you disrupt. What is she going to do? Is she going to be happy and meowing about it? No. She's going to be like, okay? She's going to squat at you. Why? It's her instinct. Okay? The same is with elephants or any other animal. And the same is with humans. We are not supposed to have interruptions unnecessarily when we are giving birth. I have taken so many clients, right? I see the wives shouting at husbands, pulling, scratching, the husband is suffering, you know, don't know what to do. That is normal. That is how it should be. But I'm here to tame it a bit. Okay? So I teach the mothers how to take that out in a positive way. Right? Rather than taking it out here and there or anywhere. Now why were we talking about that? 
we were talking about that to understand what medical intervention or frequent intervention by unnecessary people who were not supposed to be there in the room does to the labor. Now, if you interfere with the cat's laboring process, she's going to take another 15 to 30 minutes just to go into that mode. Why? Because when you dilate and when you have adrenaline rush, you re reverse dilate as well. It's a fact. So if the mother is 3 or 4 centimeter, when the doctor has assessed her and then there was a shift of, you know, change of doctors and that doctor was pretty bad, she was a witch and she did things to her which the wife was not happy about. Another doctor comes and checks her and she's just 1 centimeter, 2 centimeter, that's normal. You know why? Because she came and altered the process of labor, which wasn't supposed to happen. Now... When it comes to gentlemen, when I talk about the parts of the brain and hormones, the reason for, you know, uh, uh, giving you this information is for you to understand what is your role during labor. I usually take this in paid workshops, but because it's the first ever an awareness workshop in Hyderabad, I'm proud about it, by the way. So I'm going to tell you this that the role of fathers, expecting fathers or husbands, are divided into two categories. One is information and support. We will explore a bit of support before moving on to this. It's a talking process, okay? You can provide your wife during labor and birth with three kinds of support. Emotional, mental, and physical. Now, what is emotional support? Can anyone... Tell me about emotional support. How do you soothe her? Ronako. Okay, Ronako or don't cry. It's a very... I'm sorry to say this is how you feel that you're helping, but it turns her down. Now... It's important for you to understand. It's very good, sorry, to understand for the, for, you know, it will help your marriage also. There are, uh, understanding gender differences is very important. Without doing that, uh, I don't know how people live their lives uh, when it comes to pregnancy, birth, and marriage. So, because, you know, that is how I read about men and, you know, to understand my husband. You should be doing that also, both of you. Now, women are intellectually deficient when emotions overwhelm them, okay? So, when she's crying and you're trying to fix her problem and you're going to say, don't cry. So, she's going to be like, I have the right to cry. She feels that inside. Why is he stopping me to cry? In your mind, you are being rational. But she is overwhelmed with emotions, now, when we talk in context to labor and birth, because birth is the most emotionally vulnerable state, women are going to be the most emotional ones during pregnancy, during labor, and during birth. They are not going to be themselves. And that is absolutely normal. It is the part of the process. How do you help her? The best thing that you can do for supporting your wife emotionally is by... Validating her emotions. I'll, I'll scream. The best thing that you can do to support your wife is by validating her emotions. Whatever emotions they are, even if they don't make sense to you. And that is the part where you require patience the most. Labor and birth is about patience. The moment you lose patience, that moment is going to be a failure to progress. But it is actually a failure to be patient from the side of the medical practitioners and from your side. Okay? So we need a lot of sabar. Pregnancy, birth, breastfeeding, everything is about patience. Right? Even if you look into the Quran, if you look into the wife, I mean the life of how our companions, female companions were, it's a lot of patience. So, how do you support your wife emotionally? You validate her emotions. And that is what you do in marriage as well. Even you. Men, they need appreciation. They need acknowledgement. The moment you taunt, it puts them down. 
So you acknowledge them, appreciate them, for them to be involved with you on the same page. And they, on the other hand, they give you validation. It's okay to feel whatever you are feeling. I'm there for you. How can I make things better for you? Okay? So similarly, that is what you do in labor. Why? Because one wrong sentence will put her morale down. It's okay to cry. I'm here for you. Now, this is also a part of role of a doula. What she does. What the doctors usually do. It's been so long. You're not progressing well. And let's do this and this and this. Okay? So it's like a war. There are two sides. One is a side which doesn't understand you. That is how... I'm talking about a practical situation, right? And the other side is where you have a full complete team with you. Which I call it as a birth team. Okay? So, they support you emotionally and that is how you go up. Now, how do you support your wives mentally? Seriously? Mentally, how do you support your wife? Yes. It's okay, you don't have to be nervous. Nobody is going to judge you. <laughs> okay. By making her mentally relax, having a positive mindset yourself, being content, okay, and then helping her have a positive mindset. One of the problems with, especially as Muslims, I don't know why, it's that they complain a lot. Like, you should be the ones who should be the grateful first and foremost when we talk about mankind. Complaining, you know, uh, uh, cribbing about things, it doesn't work anytime, anywhere. Expressing and healing is a different thing. But constantly, if you are doing the same and you have a negative mindset, so you become toxic and nobody wants to be around a toxic person because you do emotional dumping on others all the time and they have no time and energy for that. They observe that hanging around this with this person is letting me down, so they, they, sec, like they are away from you. We don't want that. So how do you support your wife mentally? You support her by making her mentally relax, helping her have a positive mindset, being content yourself, and helping her feel that way. Another thing is about respecting her choices of having the people whom she wants around. Why? Women, and especially the laboring and birthing women, uh, when they are laboring or birthing, they want to be feel, they want to be felt as emotionally secure and safe. That is the reason why they count on their partners more than others because they have a very intimate and sacred relationship with their partners. When a woman is counting on you, you should be happy because she is giving you that room to allow her to feel safe. It's like you giving her this space for her to come and went and cry and you validating and then she goes back happy. Okay? When she doesn't do this, it's a problem. Something is wrong with it. That's how a relationship is. So the reason why they are counting on you is because they feel emotionally safe and secure. Now what do you do? You give her those safety and emotional security and make sure that the people who are in the room do the same. Okay? Now, if there is any one person in the room who wants to be a companion, who's forcing herself on her, she's not likely to open up. And when th that happens, the process won't be the way it is supposed to be. This is another thing that you can do by providing her mental support. Have the people on board where she feels safe and secure with. It also includes medical care providers. If you feel that your wife is going to that particular doctor under pressure or she is just giving it up and you know that the behavior of that doctor is wrong and she is not respecting your wife's choices or listening to her, that the one thing that you can do immediately is to have a switch of the doctor. 
and there is no harm in changing doctor at any point of the time or having a backup plan you should always have plan b for everything okay there is a strategy that i call brain strategy it works in business in work in your real life it works even during pregnancy labor and birth b stands for benefits r for risks okay a for alternatives i for intuition instincts istikhara n for negation what happens if you don't do that at all you can apply this everywhere and then for n you have a plan b this helps you sort your goals and decide things in a good way benefits risks alternatives intuition and negation and this brain strategy you can use for other decision making process when it comes to giving consent or refusing now coming to how to support your wife physically is make sure that the room she is laboring in or the hospital room doesn't have unnecessary people or is calm and quiet most of the mothers they prefer just like how cats do or other animals do to have a calm and quiet peaceful atmosphere like dim lights not bright lights or a lot of noises all these things distract another example is for example she is having a contraction so she her brain is in primitive mode and you you did not recognize that she is having a contraction and you go to her like where are the keys or where is the water etc so this forces her brain to shift to the neocortex mode and it loses the flow and then it takes time for the brain to go into that mode again so what do you do you give time you see uh, a timing of the contractions is another physical support that you can provide her with okay you have a lot of apps that time the contractions so she shouldn't have to worry about you know uh, when it is coming or when it's not coming when you should go to the hospital or when you should not go to the hospital this is one thing so if you see that she is having a contraction you stop until that contraction is over the same thing you request the medical care provider to do she is having a contraction people don't care and they are like we want to do this test that test and the mother is screaming i need some time let this contraction pass i'm having pain you know they don't use contraction they use pain i'm in pain pain so what do you do at that moment you request the staff to wait for a minute let it go by and then whatever they can do whatever they have to so any doubts did you understand the basics of how you can support your wife during labor and birth lot of information i guess right anyways coming to birth professionals birth professional is someone who gives services during or at labor and birth or throughout your pregnancy okay they are classified as medical and non medical your obstetrics uh, obstetricians and gynecologists are medical birth professionals midwives are also medical birth professionals these people are high uh, are trained for more high risk deliveries you will see the difference of how things happen the way they happen and why do you guys have to struggle so much to get your way or to have the experience that you want non medical professionals include childbirth educators or doula such as me i am a non medical birth professional my scope of practice includes education counseling helping you preparing you coaching you for that moment and being on board with the doctors and midwives okay i'm not supposed to teach you against them but at the same time i'm supposed to give you unbiased information okay now this is what the birth team looks like so when you have a non medical support person you have ob gynae and midwives here and then you have a mother and then this is the birth partner it may be any companion that the mother wants it may be her husband or her sister sister in law mother mother in law whoever she wants okay and then this is a doula i'll be explaining to you what a doula is doula it's pronounced as doula not a doula okay she is a professionally trained labor and birth non medical support it refers to a professional female birth assistant okay uh we had a lot of you know we had a concept of dais and all but those were midwives and those uh, you know may, those were or may not educated but they were skilled but in today's world to this con- context 
If you want to hire a doula, she should be educated, she should be certified through a good organization and she should have evidence-based information with her and she should know what she is doing is within her scope of practice, not stepping beyond her boundaries. Alright, so the role of a doula is to give you education. So if I am a doula, now till now I was a childbirth educator to you guys. Now if I am a doula, I will have two to three prenatal doula appointments with you to gauge your understanding level. Okay, how much do you know about it? And then I may arrange few more sessions for you to understand how things are. And then I will provide you with support, uh, emotional, mental and physical. I will not replace the husband. I'll be there in fact to push him, do his job. I'll also have my own role. And that role starts from the moment you go into labor till you give birth. So it's like you are having another pregnant mother with you who understands you in each of your contraction. Getting it? So our emotional, mental and physical support includes acupressure massages or different, you know, helping with different positioning techniques so that the baby goes into optimal position. Some of the mothers, they have back labor because of the improper positioning of the baby. So as a doula, I would suggest her to... Do Try different positions, so as to turn the baby in an optimal position. And then I may give you acupressure massage, I may give you hot packs or cold packs. I use different techniques called ribosos. That is how I can provide you physical support. With emotional support, I'll help you validate your emotions, be there with you in each of your contraction. And for emotional support, I'll help you to be at the same level when it comes to your emotions. Okay? But... I am not supposed to take any medical decision on your behalf. It will be with you and your husband. I will give you unbiased information, but not decide for you or even prescribe Panadol for you. Got it? So, I also ad advocate for your birth plan. Now, it depends on my organization. If I have an organization uh, who certified me from the West, then I have the right even to fight with the doctor. But in Gulf and India, we cannot do that because we are not legally secure. So, I'm certified from Amani Birth. Amani Birth doesn't give me the right to talk to the doctor to advocate for you. But I can push you and remind you to question with the doctor for your choices. Okay? And then I coach and support the birth partner. What is the evidence? American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists, ACOG, they say that having a doula reduces the rate of cesarean by 25%. So, doulas are evidence-based. Midwives are evidence-based. Doulas and the mothers who, are within, who fall within 80 to 90 percent of low-risk cream should go to the midwives and doulas, not to obstetricians and gynecologists. You may have that mentality because they are skilled in handling high risk, you will go there, but because they are programmed to handle abnormalities, they will treat you as a potential patient. You're understanding? So you need to understand where to go. If your wife is having a high risk complication, if you're having a high risk medical complication, then only you go to them. If you fall within low risk, you don't go. You go to a midwife. Okay? So the uh, result is that the uh, it's proven that if you have a doula, the labor is shorter, there's decreased need for pain medications, decreased cesarean rates and fewer reports of dissatisfaction, 90% drop in use of pain medication, 31% less use of pitocin, 34% fewer negative birth experiences, 40 minutes shorter labor, increased breastfeeding and prenatal and postpartum doula care, 12% more spontaneous vaginal births and higher APCAR scores. Okay, so ACOG says continuous labor support by doula is one of the most effective tools to improve labor and delivery outcomes. And John Kennel he says, Dr. John, if a doula were a drug, it would be unethical not to offer it. This was for you as an FYI, because I'm using doulas, doulas, so you would be like, what is she talking, right? So let's move on. Because I'll be there till the baby is given birth. And if the baby latches to the mother within one hour of the birth, which is called the golden hour, the studies show there are higher ch uh, chances of breastfeeding rates. So I'll do there. Until the baby is born, I'll be there, I'll help the baby have her first breastfeed and then leave after two hours. That is why. Mothers with high rates of cesarean have issues with breastfeeding their babies 
and this leads to mother baby bonding problems why because if you don't breastfeed you don't have the hormones to bond with your baby okay that's why everything is interlinked and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it so amazing and everything you will find it in our religion i don't have to explain anything else yes okay this is a score on based on which your baby is judged with what to do whether he has you know some issues or not if it is 8 and above they are healthy and they need to be out if they are 8 and no this also decides their iq later on so this apgar score is taken during birth okay it includes how actively the baby is responding to stimuli and all those things as soon as the baby is born the basically the tests which they do by taking the baby away when we talk about childbirth there are two mo- there are many models of care but predominantly in the world there are two models of care one is medical model of care which is in india and gulf another is physiological model of care or midwifery model of care in india midwifery model of care is just taking birth emerging okay now we talked about how bad experiences you had how bad you felt with the doctors and i said i am not here to talk against the doctors so it didn't make sense to you right why because you need to understand from what perspective they are today most of the medical organizations they follow medical model of maternity care so if you go or choose any medical organization for providing services for yourself and your wife which follows medical model of maternity care you are going to end up having all of those things but if you choose an organization which promotes midwifery model of maternity care or are open to midwifery model of maternity care or follow collaborative like both medical and midwifery like how fernandez says they have doctors they have midwives if they if you choose such an organization which is collaborative or open to midwifery or promotes natural birth as in natural birth which we will discover then you may have a different birthing experience so what is medical model of maternity care it is provider centered it is doctor centered it is authoritarian you are our patient according to medical model of maternity care birth is a potential pathological event what is pathology no one what is pathology yes so birth is a potential pathological event that is why they will call the mother patients that is why they will treat the mothers as patients are they wrong in their place no because that is what they are taught that is what they are programmed with okay did you understand the difference so if you go and talk to a doctor who has studied from a medical institution about medical model of care and has no idea absolutely about international organizations or updated guidelines or what is happening around the world or what are the rights of the mother within the frame of the country then you are going to end up have a better experience and she is going to be like tum doctor samajhte ke apne aap ko that's what she is going to say and she will be a very big failure to you right tum apni doctori mat jhaado body and mind separate to them you remember who knows the oath oath while they take right so they are trained to be away from emotions even the ob guys so to them body and mind and emotions are separate things if a preg- pregnant mother complains of a back ache she's going to be like kya mai itte aur tam paida kare na bachcho ko tum hi check hai kya bolke she say she will not validate oh my god why are you feeling like this i'm so sorry you have to go through this blah blah, blah. is she wrong at her place that is why she she is so now comes your role what are you going to do you are going to go to the organizations or doctors that are bit ethical and they provide compassionate medical care okay it's a whole study where you have you follow ethics 
and you have compassion in providing the care. They'll be like, hello, how are you? How was your day? How are you feeling? Madam, can I have your details? When you go to any hospital, any other hospital, which strictly follows this, no compassion, no ethics. This is the difference. Now it comes to you. My objective is that we have such kind of care available, not only for the elites, but also for middle class Muslim community. So hope and pray that Allah makes ways and either, you know, me or someone else who has this idea make this, uh, you know, available or facilitate this for our Muslim middle class community. We, we are the majority, right? If you go to Stockholm, normal birth over there is 1 to 2 lakhs. But you'll be treated like a royal. You know, they provide premium services. You can have a water birth, hoo -hoo -ha, your husband will be there, he'll be treated like a VIP. The VIP, the cost is high. Maybe Fernandez Abbott's 90 to 80,000, you know, maybe within your budget. If you talk to them and if you show them. So, we need Muslim women and men to be on board with this project so that we can make it available to our community. Okay? And I'm the only first Muslim childbirth educator and doula right now in Hyderabad, by the way. Because I'm from Amani birth. <coughs> Intervention dependent. Because birth is a pathological, potential, you know, process, they are programmed to intervene. How do you treat a disease? By intervening. That is their methodology. Time restrictions. Baby is a separate patient, again. They'll take you, put the baby in the nursery, bye-bye. They'll feed and give bottle milk unless you tell them, I want to breastfeed, I don't want the baby to be in the nursery, I want the baby in my room and, and all that. Okay? Objective, life, mother and baby is reasonably good condition at the time of discharge. A healthy mother, healthy baby. Was it really healthy, emotionally, mentally? No. You guys were traumatized. But to them, the bachai chuana. Physiological model of care or midwifery model of care sees birth as a normal physiological event. It's a normal process. It's a family-centered process. Okay? Those hospitals that follow, the hospitals or birth centers that follow this model of care, they are family-centered. They will respect your choices. They will respect the husband's choices. And they will also give the baby what you had decided to give for the baby. That is delayed cord clamping, immediate breastfeeding, skin to skin, whatever. Individualized care. Because you are an individual. You are not a body or an identity. Time irrelevant. Mother and baby in inextricable unit. Objective, live, healthy mother and baby. Positive birth experience.